So about 10 or 11 months ago, I made a video on how to use your smartphone as a light meter. The reason I made this video was because an actual digital light meter is about £140 on average, and that is a hell of a lot of money. So in the interest of saving money, um, I thought I'd make another video, this time on an actual light meter that you don't need to shed out loads and loads of money for. Um, so this one is a Western Master 5. There are several versions of it, but basically they all do the same thing. This one comes in a nice case, um, which is still survived. Fits perfectly, nice and snug. Um, and I'm basically going to show you the way it works. So first of all, my favourite thing about it is the fact that it doesn't use any batteries whatsoever. Um, the way it works is that it has these sort of um, electrons in here and when you press the button it lets the light go in, it charges the electrons and that's what gives you the power to read the light. This is if it's quite dull day outside, if it's like overcast or whatever or in the shade and um, you need to open up this flap and then it lets more light in basically um, and then you put this one on, this one on if it's really really sunny you can also get those, um, forget the name, you get those white things that look like sort of a dome that go on top of it. Um, and that's so that you can put this up, if you had the white thing, if you put it up to someone's face, as you're, as you're the photographer, put it up to their face, read the light, it's reading the light that's falling onto it. Um, but without that white thing, the way it works is that um, you as the photographer put this next to your camera and you just press the button and it reads the overall light. Uh, I just had to answer the door for someone and I've completely forgotten what I was talking about. Okay, so anyway, um, it's not as reliable as, well, reliable, I shouldn't say that because it's this is, I don't know when this was made, but um, a long time ago and it's still working absolutely fine. It's not as accurate as a digital light meter but this cost me 20 quid off of eBay um, and that's the difference. It doesn't use any batteries as I said, um, it's just it's quite small, easy to carry around, it goes around your neck with this strap. If I could buy a digital one, I would, but I can't afford it so I have this and to be honest, um, my images always come out perfectly exposed and a top tip, just in case you're really really worried or it's a really really important shoot, I use my digital camera also as a light meter um, and then you get an instant image review of how the image is going to come out. Um, but this works. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this at all. This works fine. So the way it works is, and this looks really really confusing all this stuff. When I first got it I looked at it and I just went, oh my god. But actually it's really really simple. You just press in this button here and, then you and that allows you to turn the, um, the dial which gives you your ISO. It's labelled ASA here, that's an old film term, but it's exactly the same as ISO. Um, the DIN there is, is an old German um, measurement for ISO. Um, it's cool that they have it on there, but no one, no one uses it anymore. So once you put in your ISO, I usually put the ISO a little bit less than what the um, film says you should. So for example, if I had Ilford FP4, that's a 125 ISO. I'll always put the, I'll always rate that at 100 ISO. So once you've done that, the next thing you need to do is um, press the button, and that will give you the needle will jump to a number on here. Um, again, if it's a really bright day, keep this cover on. If it's a dull day or in the shade, open that. But you'll know which one because the the needle will stop right at the end if you're on the wrong one. Um, so once you have your reading, I'm going to take outside, it's quite bright, so that's 14 out of a possible 16, um, so it's quite a bright day. Um, then you just turn this, you put the red arrow onto the number that it tells you. If it's like 13 and a half, the reading, I'll just put it down to 13, I'll go to the number that's lower than it. Um, but if it's a solid number, just leave it on that. So there you have your light reading. Now what you need to do is decide what aperture you want to shoot at. 
and what shutter speed you want to shoot at because it gives you all the possibilities around this circle but you have to make the decision yourself at what you're going to shoot at um, so for example if you wanted a shallow depth of field um, you'd go for a, a wide aperture now the camera I use only goes up to one one thousandth of a second um, and on here it goes up to a twelve hundredth of a second um, and the maximum aperture, sort of the minimum aperture that I possibly could have um, to shoot in this light with this camera is one one thousandth of a second at f6.3 I can't go any lower than that otherwise it will be overexposed but if I wanted to shoot at something like f14 to really get crisp sharp fully um, in focus image then it's telling me I need one two hundredth of a second so you read your aperture that you want to shoot at and then it tells you lines it up with the shutter speed that you can shoot that at uh, now the cat's trying to eat my wire for my microphone can you not? I know this wasn't an outside field test but the amount of time it takes to get the film back don't eat the wire the amount of time it takes to get the film back um, I kind of just wanted to make this video today and, up and edit it and upload it today um, but I can assure you it does work because I use it all the time uh, I shoot probably well a couple of a couple of rolls of film a week um, and they always come out exposed as I said I would buy a digital light meter if I could but the point of this video is that it's way too expensive and you don't need to spend that much money so guys thanks for watching and I hope to see you in another video